So this is another question. We have had, you know, we have a lot of questions about all these things. We have, it's so hard to get these. We try to, what we try to do, like we done one on donkeys, you know, and, 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 and mules. So we try to put them in, but there might be 20 things that we try and cover in this. So this one, we get quite a lot. So we thought we are going to make a film on this and we are going to have our own products. So that's why I said to you before, if you join the club, you send the details and you're like a, a member of All Strong Promotions. I don't know how that how Reed's going to do it or not. That's not my side of things. I don't understand it. But basically, you send us your email, etc. And then we just send you an email when something news come out or something we think you might be interested in by the information we have. So if you're a rider, drive, ride and drive, or you're going on a long trek or anything, or anything at all, you know, we're going to do barefoot. I mean, Reed's ponies barefoot. I do 100 mile a week. <laughs> yeah, all right, don't believe me, but it does 100 mile a week and his feet's perfect. But it's taken us all, taken Re really, she's dedicated to and um, the time and effort she's put in to get these feet just right that it will tolerate working on the pavement, i.e., the public highway, the road, yeah, um, hard surface, and how it copes with it. And I'm really interested in it. What you can't do, the one thing we have learned, and I think that Re. Uh, agrees is you cannot do it in a six week period it's done over a much longer period of time to give the time the foot to harden and accept it but now Ree's pony will do and has done and i'll you know that's 100 percent 100 mile in seven days no trouble at all barefoot on the road yeah so i just want to talk about this so all these things will be coming out in the future but this one here is about the the, the collars we put around their necks. So you can buy these collars quite readily, yeah? They're a tethering collar, if you like, and like that. The reason we use them, I'm just going to show you briefly, just briefly. So there's head collar. So when we've got a young horse, there's the head collar there. And then what we do to that is we clip these two parts together and we put a strap around the neck. So if I just hold that up like that, can you see the back of the of the jaw and we put a collar there and another one there. I've tried to do them a different colour to show you. The problem we're having is these are not made well enough, in my opinion. So we're going to manufacture them ourselves um, or have them manufactured to our specifications and they'll be one of the things that come up. So if you're a subscriber, you know, you in the club, is it is like all strong club whatever they're going to call it i don't know but they will let you know you know on the um youtube and facebook i don't know what it is i'm hopeless youtube facebook and i oh, mean there's another one with a little bird on it I don't know, whatever that might be i don't know Reed's just gone out so i can't ask her Rio? no it's not there so so that's it so these are not made to the standard that we want. So we're going to get them manufactured in this country uh, ourselves because this is the type of stuff that happens, you know, where this is not made strong enough and they pull out, you know, they don't pull out, but it wears, you know, and it's no good. Why do we use them? I'll just go into briefly into that. We'll be explaining all that in the future. We have got a, um, but we'll explain it in great depth when we start making these films about, you know, so this now goes around the horse's neck this one's behind his ears, obviously, yeah? And this one goes round the horse's, horse's neck. Let's just get this undone a minute. And the other thing is, these head collars, this isn't a bad quality head collar, it's quite well made, but, I mean, the stuff we have is not going to be cheap because it, it won't have pins that go rusty and buckles that go rusty because they'll be stainless steel and they'll be of the right grade of stainless steel so they last much longer. So that will be connected to there, where you normally put your lead rope on, and this would be around the horse's neck. If I just fold that over like that, you can see basically what I mean. Now what this does is, when you've got a young horse, we've got a, you know our own design of head collar, which is part of our braking training, you know, the actual equipment to train horse for driving, you know, all the groundwork. And it's not just a roller and like that, it's quite, not involved, but it's things I've learned over the years. So there'll be a, you know, we're bringing that to market. There's a lot of stuff we're bringing to market 
because people keep asking us all the time, why do you do this? Why do you use that? How come your horses so quiet? How can you drive them anywhere? You're only in a rubber bit. How do you do it? Well, that's what we're here to try and explain to you. Um, but we've got to do it in the format of really detailed films. And then you'll go onto the site and you'll pick which one you want to watch, which suits you, you know, for what you want to learn. But there's, there's never going to be a film that goes from one end to the other of breaking horse. If you want that, there's plenty of people do that. That's not what we want. What we're going to do is take the first section and get that into the horse's head that he's happy, safe, confident, and happy in that. And then we'll move on. And then that one will overlap that a little bit and we'll go through. But it's all down to you what you want to know. We will make a film of it if there's enough people that want to know the same thing. So just getting back to these a bit. These are not good enough, so we'll be bringing them out. Here's one here, for instance, which is, you know, yes, admittedly, it's, it's quite old, but it's all rusty. So we want proper stainless steel. This webbing is no good. This webbing is no good at all. This is far too firm and hard here for a sit on horse. When we have ours made, they'll be made with a padding that goes round so it will be you know like um like some good head collars have a padded pole piece don't they a nose yeah well these will be padded and it will be a, probably a sleeve that you put over if you want you know if you need that but the point the point of it is when you're training a young horse you can keep this around its neck it's secured you can remove the head collar and fit the bridle yeah and your horse is still safe. It's not going to step back. It's not going to do anything. And also, these have got to be made as wide as this so they're comfortable on the horse's neck. We don't want all this pressure up behind the thing. And as for these rope head collars that everybody raves about, you, what you want to do is just put it on the back of your neck and get someone to jerk it. See how it feels on your neck, you know, or behind here, up near, you know, where your head meets your spine and give it a jerk. See if you like it. Some of them even got ball bearings put in the top. Please don't tell me they don't because I've got a couple here. These rope head collars come from, a lot of them come from the States, you know. Well, if we can secure a horse so that if he pulls back or is startled at something, I mean, obviously we don't just put these things on and get, you know, it's all part of the training. We show you how to go. We're going to have a young colt in and we wait till we get one that's a bit lively. Um... I'm very cultish and we'll do it with that cult. We, you know, obviously it will be an untouched horse, basically, um, or pony or whatever we might use. Normally something about 40 in hands, only because it's easier to film, you know, trying to get a great big horse, you know, little tiny pony. They're both awkward, but a 14 hand, 14 and two would be best. So that will be, you know, a film that we're going to do in depth in the future. Um so this one here, I'm just showing that people keep asking. That's why we use them. We put that round the horse's neck. Not too tight, obviously. Um, but these are not made. This one we just had done, but the, the ring's wrong. This is wrong. They still haven't put stainless steel fittings on. So we're going to got another, well, probably be the same chap. Um, we asked him to copy, you know, like the one that we already had that we had made earlier. But now it's just getting the materials right. So that's on. So that there is obviously much, much softer to pull against than that is there, which is half the width. Obviously, you're spreading the weight over a much bigger area. And it's better three, four inches behind his ears than to be directly up the back of his ears. Do you see? So... But we'll, we're going to make a film so that before you buy one, you can get the film and have a look and, and see why we do it and how we do it. Like one lady, for instance, um, we just sent 10 down to Texas. Um, and she said the difference in her horses is remarkable. You know, are they, they're they so easy to handle with them on, you know, not necessary to lead about. But when you're putting the bridles on, she drives teams of horses, you know, ponies, acne they are actually. Um, yeah, we sent them down there, she's over the moon with them. And loads of people are asking us, but we're going to get them manufactured ourselves so we can control the quality. And it's the same with the braking rig that we have. I mean, 
we only ever use them for ourselves but so many people have come here from around the world and they want to um you know would you could you get me one made would you so we are going to bring them to market as i think that's the terminology and along with t-shirts hoodies and all loads of other stuff um but that's all coming this year so i hope that's uh that helps <laughs>